Firefighters in Greece battled through the night in what authorities have called the largest ever fire evacuation in the country's history. The country is expecting to feel another heat wave this upcoming week. Greece is in the middle of what could become its longest heat wave in recorded history. This isn't normal. It isn't usually so hot here in Greece. And wildfires have cropped up all over the country. More than 80 wildfires are burning right now. We have been extremely fortunate to not have been affected by these fires, but we are left trying to survive the brutal heat. In my home country of the United States, roughly 87% of people have some form of air conditioning. But on a sailboat without AC, when the wind dies, the sun shines, and even the ocean starts to feel hot, there is no escape. The air gets heavy, clothes stick to your body, you get irritable, and just trying to concentrate becomes a struggle. So this week, we're going over what we do to stay sane while living through a heat wave on the water. What strategies we use. It's kind of nuts how hot it is still. What gear we install. So I'm hoping to be able to place these. And how we attempt to escape it. We found a pretty secluded spot. And we also venture ashore in search of shade and a cool breeze to see how people here on Zakintos have thrived on this hot yet beautiful island for thousands of years. This one is about close to also 2,000 years old. Both their traditional way of life as well as how they are adapting to modernity. I feel like I'm in Greece. I get all the grain. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> all right, buddy. It's 10 a.m. Are you cooking breakfast? No, I'm actually cooking dinner because it has been so hot in this anchorage that I have not been able to cook dinner. It's just like a sauna down here and the idea of heating up the cabin even more is just ugh, torture. Yeah, so it's 10 a.m. and it is 86 degrees inside the boat and it's only gonna get hotter. I think because this anchorage is so protected, there's no wind coming through, so we have nice protection, but it is really freaking hot. Plus, I've been getting migraines from the heat. So come like seven o'clock in the evening after having a headache all day from the sun, I'm just like so done. Last thing I wanna do is cook. Yeah, I really think we should just figure out a way to get off the boat at the hottest point of the day today. Just like find some random cave or like a pool or a tree, you know, cause it's just too hot to yeah. be on the boat. Okay, baby. Operation. Stay cool. You're gonna be in charge of that operation, baby. You know why? Because you're the coolest member of this boat. You are pretty cool. All right, so I think to beat the heat, we're gonna paddle over to the same island that we went to while I was sick with Giovanna and Fletcher. Try to find some caves to cool off in, do some swimming. It already feels good now that we're on the water because I can just do this. Okay, let's paddle. Yeah, so bud, I've been doing a lot of research on the history of the Mediterranean. And for a long, long time, like all of ancient history, boats that would travel the Mediterranean, they were mostly galleys. So they were powered by people and oars. Some of these boats were over a hundred foot long. They were like the cargo ships at the time. As I understand it, you did not want to be a galley slave. It's kind of interesting to think that we're using the same mode of propulsion to go like have a fun day and try to relax and cool off as these giant merchant ships that used to be propelled by hundreds of desperate galley slaves in the same ocean. Woo. All right, well, it is hot and we're hanging in the shade for a bit, <laughs> taking a little breather. Uh, there goes Oso. Oso, y'all done? You wanna come join us again? He's like, let's see, could I scale this cliff? No? Okay, I'll come back. Welcome, Welcome back, back, buddy. Okay, Oso, this whole area is yours. Man, what a cool little spot. It's like a little parking garage for our, for our kayak. Check it out, bud. We're all tied up. <laughs> okay, baby, time to go in the water. Good baby. Does that feel good? <gasps> Not sure? Undecided? Well, for all those boats out there, we found a pretty secluded spot. Oh, this is definitely a good way to beat the heat. Hello, 
little turtle. <laughs> so we're heading back to the boat, but before we get to the boat, we're going to go grab some food. And because it's so hot still, we're gonna head to a nearby hotel that has a pool that is open to the public, as well as a restaurant. Hey, Babu. That was an intense ascent. Isa, you're getting too big. You gotta cut it out. Good splasher. What do you think of the spot, Ben? Nice. Still continuing the theme of being in the shade by the water. What are you getting, baby? You gonna get a Greek salad? Eat this menu. <laughs> We've got Greek salad, we've got two pork souvlakis and tzatziki sauce. They take pork, they kind of like prepare it and cube it, and then they drench it in sauce and seasoning, and it is crazy, crazy good. That was supposed to be a lunch, but it ended up being dinner, so <laughs> looks like there is no need for you to have cooked that food this morning. Yeah, all right, we'll have it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to the boat. I'm tired. Yeah. You done, baby? So it's three in the morning and I just woke up because I was getting too hot. So I'm having to rinse off right now. And Desiree just woke up too, like we were bumped into each other. The boat's just not cooling down. I think the real problem is that the wind died down. And so uh, the, the boat's just not getting rid of the heat at all. Hi, buddy. It's so hot. <laughs> I don't know how Isa's asleep. It's crazy. Yeah, Isa's doing fine. That's the crazy part. Alright, good morning. So, we are running the engine this morning not because we are getting underway, but because we are now charging our batteries first thing in the morning. It has been a brutally hot couple of days, and we have found that if we charge the batteries by running the engine in the afternoon like we normally do, it just compounds the problem. To kind of give you a tour of the boat ventilation-wise, we have two large overhead hatches. One is right here in the V-berth. One is right here in the main cabin. And then you could kind of call the companionway is sort of the third. The problem is that this one here is designed to be opened aft, right? So the opening faces the back of the boat. It does this because of the location of the boom, the location of the vang. It doesn't really allow the vent to open forward. What that means though, is that there's only one hatch on the entire boat that faces forward, which is the direction that the wind is coming when we're at anchor. And so this single hatch is what's actually allowing the wind to enter the boat and to ventilate the boat. So, I mean, I would argue that we are definitely realizing that the ventilation on this boat could be better. This, as with all boat design elements, is a trade-off because any forward-facing hatches that are on the forward part of the boat are going to be a lot more prone to leaking when underway. Particularly, a lot of boats will have a hatch actually on the foredeck, so right here, which would be great for airflow over the V-berth. But those hatches almost always leak. There's just too much twisting happening up there. There's too much water on the foredeck itself. So this boat, as we've talked about, prioritizes comfort offshore over comfort at anchor. And this is an example of that. And it's dark, dark green. <laughs> yeah. So this is our first dark color boat. And uh, I think the boat becomes an oven at some point during the day. So as ridiculous as it seems, I have found that rinsing the deck down actually helps regulate the temperature down below. Because I think a lot of the problem on the boat is that it's just not that well insulated. So whereas a lot of the houses ashore, they're made out of giant cinder blocks and 
brick and wood with lots of insulation. The boat doesn't have nearly as much insulation. So when the material of the boat heats up, the inside does turn into a little bit of an oven. Now, one thing that would really help this situation is if we had some kind of a sunshade that covers the boat with canvas so that the sun isn't directly heating up the boat itself. We actually had a really killer sunshade on our first boat, Atticus 1, and we have some designs in mind for a sunshade for Atticus 2. Now is just not the time to stop and to do projects. Now is the time to attempt <laughs> to do a lot of cruising and fun stuff. So hopefully when this heat wave passes, we'll get right back into the swing of things. And in the future, we'll probably do some kind of a sunshade. So how's Isabella been dealing with the heat? I think babies adapt to anything. So she's been doing pretty well. She does have like a heat rash on her back, but I've just been keeping her in the pool. I don't know, once an hour. Does that feel nice? Is that cool? Yeah, so this works really well. Just kind of getting cool. But the only problem is I end up doing this like six or seven times a day. So I'm just like in this weird vicious cycle of just getting dry, becoming a like hot zombie, back down, back up, back down, back up. All right, good morning. It is a very pretty morning today. I'm waking up early because we're getting ready to do an inland adventure today. I just wanted to show you how still and pretty it is here before the sun rises. Although it's mind blowing, but it's kind of hot already. It actually didn't really cool down last night. It was hot all night. It's a little bit hard to sleep. So we just gotta push through. <laughs> So today we are going to an olive farm and olive oil producing farm. <laughs> I don't think it's a very good place for Oso because they've got a lot of animals there. So before we head out, I'm gonna take Oso ashore real quick and just get his energy out, play a bunch of fetch and tug so that when we leave him, he's just nice and tired and wants to chill. So we decided to name our daughter Isabella because I wanted to name her a Hispanic name. My mother and that whole side of my family is from Honduras and so it was really important to me to maintain a strong connection to that part of my heritage. Now I didn't actually grow up speaking Spanish and so when I would go home and visit our Honduran family members I always felt a little bit embarrassed that I didn't speak Spanish as well as I wanted to. And as I got older it became really important for me to really really double down and try to learn how to speak Spanish so that I could feel connected to that part of my family. Now I can confidently say I speak Spanish fairly well and it's something I'm really proud of. But what I really wish that I had back then, which I use now all the time, is Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. I really like how Babbel focuses on teaching real world conversations. Me puedes enviar todo por correo. Got it. Because ultimately that's why I want to keep up with my Spanish. I want to be able to chat with my relatives in Honduras over the phone and on holidays. ¿Quién es ella? ¿Es tu abuelita? ¿Sí? ¿Cómo estás abuelita? And the minute that Isabella is old enough to use this app, I'm going to make sure that she's on it at least 15 minutes a day. That way, unlike me, there'll never be a time in her life where she's embarrassed about not knowing Spanish. Babbel is now offering a lifetime subscription so you can save a ton of money and give yourself a gift that will last the rest of your life. So you can click on the link in the description or scan this QR to get 60% off of your subscription. And be sure to let us know in the comments what language you'd like to learn. Greece is one of the largest producers of olive oil in the world, and the industry employs a significant portion of the population. For the inhabitants of Zakintos, where olive trees have been cultivated for over 6,000 years, the olives and the oil they produce are not just agricultural products, they're a cornerstone of the island's identity, a living connection to their ancient past. So we are okay. at the Fedianos Family Organic Olive Oil Farm, and this is Dimitri, and he's gonna show us around, and this is your family farm, it's correct? A family from yes yeah. exactly okay you are very welcome we go from this way sure that yes. sounds great. perfect thank you 
I was immediately struck by how much natural shade the farm had. And with the breeze coming off the mountains and the cool running water nearby, I felt blissful relief from the crazy heat of the day. I feel like I'm in Greece. Yes, that's a, <laughs> wow. That's you say that. Yeah, this is beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Generally, the wells here, it's about seven meters deep. This water, we use it for our house, for the garden's flowers. Uh -huh. We don't give water from the in the farm, in the raisins, the grapes. Uh -huh. They take natural from the rain. This is never, never, never out. coming off. Are you sure? One hundred percent. This is a thousand-year-old pot. So. <laughs> I, I think I got a lot of water. Bravo. You did it, buddy. Yes, Look at that. Bravo. Oh, that's cold. It feels so good. You gonna taste it, buddy? We don't drink it every day, this, because it's a little heavy in calcium, but it's yeah, water that we can drink. Yeah, it's good. You want to try a little? Yeah, yeah. Ah, you okay? It's very good. So, the farm here, it's about two hectares of land, and uh, we have a special, we cultivate black raisins, okay. grapes for wine, okay. and we have also a little olive trees inside the farm, okay. the baby olive trees, okay. because the big part of the ancient olive trees, it is on the foot of the mountain. Oh, interesting. Yes, okay. it's very interesting that. So okay. now this part, it's all black raisins, we work for that in August period. It becomes slow, slow red. Yeah. This is a uh, black raisin because after the dry, the color become black. This they need about now close to one month. Can I taste one? Okay, so I give you now. Okay, so okay. it's like a baby grape. Yes, exactly. Mm. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Imagine that if we put it down in August, uh -huh. how much also sweet, sweet it, it is. Sweet it is, yeah. It is. Oh, wow. Look at this. Can I eat this whole thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, it's so good. Very good. Everybody happy? <laughs> very good. Very happy. Mm. It's also for you that. I get all the grapes. Nice. Great. <laughs> it's your lucky day. So if we look a little back there on the foot of the mountains is the olive farms we have in the oh. island. Mm. The most of the olives exist on the foot of the mountains. You can see we have a small olives. They start oh. to be here. Eh? This is the babies. They're so cute. How we pick up the fruits? Generally, we have a big nets around of the tree. Nets, if you like to see, like this one there. Oh, okay. And then we have machines now the last years. They move inside, they come the, on the nets, the fruits. The old system that we take, we work with this high technology system. <laughs> yeah. You can see, eh? We call it Katsurida. We do it with a carefully way. So we don't make like this uh -huh. because we can break it. Ah. If we go from back here and we take it, out like this then it's much better for the tree so if i cut from here for example and i i can move it yeah oh, cool. okay so then you collect all the fruit that falls yes. it falls onto the big net and we put it in the box and we move it to the olive press i can show you also we have take one private olive press to make our olive oil here in the farm so you like mm. to see that be yeah cool. absolutely yes? okay we go now okay. there so the fruits they come straight from the trees here. Oh, okay. And there they wash it. Mm -hmm. And these machines, they take the fruits of the olives and they move it in this area. This machine is like a knife inside and they cut the fruits. They make like a pasta. So the pasta, they stay here. And then we move the pasta inside to the decatter. And the oil, they come out from here. Wow. Isabella, you want to push these buttons? <laughs> make oil. Yeah. <laughs> The Therianos family farm specializes in high phenolic olive oil. Phenolic compounds are known to have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and cardioprotective properties. Dimitri is actively participating in ongoing research into how they may reduce the risk of chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer. Producing high phenolic olive oil often requires particular attention to the variety of olives, growing conditions, harvesting methods, and extraction processes. And Dimitri is one of the experts in this field. So Dimitri, you said these are your trees here? Yes, totally we have close to 1,000 olive trees. So it's a tree that is a very old trees of course it's a hundred of years so you can see here it's about also six seven hundred years old so how old is this tree 
So this one is about close to also 2,000 years old. Wow. It is one of the little trees in the planet. They can live for thousands of years. They continue to give a fruit and also a very high quality of juice they give. That is something also very nice. They live for thousands of years and they continue to give a fruit to us. That's amazing that your family has been working with these trees for generations. For generations. Your great, great, great grandfather like yeah. touched that tree. Yes, I mean, that's exactly. just so it's, fascinating. It's fascinating. I come from a family of movers. The majority of my family, going back generations, have lived and died far away from where they were born. But I was truly awestruck to meet a family that has such a deep connection to their land, to their heritage, to their way of life. As I looked down each row of olive trees, I felt as though I was looking into Dimitri's family's past, an unbroken chain of blood and tradition leading through the centuries all the way to Dimitri. And I can't help but hope that hundreds of years from now, there will be a Theriano lovingly working these trees, wondering in awe about those who came before him. What is it like to be a farmer in this area? The life it is, you, of course, we need to work many hours per day to keep the farm in a good situation and to cultivate all these things. So until uh, December, uh -huh. it's very hard, yeah. we have much work. I'm working with my father from uh, five years old. Wow. Mm. They say to us, we finished the work to cut, of course, the, some branches from the raisins and grapes. It's the one work we need to do in the summer. And after we finish, we go for swimming and ice cream. Oh! So if you finish this part of work fast, we go more fast. Great. If you delay, we go late. So we, we go and we <laughs> would do it fast. <laughs> so until the one age of this, I remember all of these yeah. memories, it's so nice because we, we have also the time. My mm -hmm. father, they have the time after they finish the work about 12 o'clock because mm -hmm. we get up early in the morning because after it's very hot, you can work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That time, the farmers, they have more time, uh -huh. I can say. It's not like this now. Yeah. yeah. We have more work. Mm -hmm. You have the computer, you have their mails. Mm -hmm. Right. You have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. You have YouTubers. YouTubers. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and now the time we say to farmers, it's very little farmers, they can be only farm. Mm -hmm. Maybe they work another work, maybe they have a tourism. Maybe. For us, it's very happy to come people here and to, to love the place here, to feel it and to enjoy. Yeah, well thank you very much. We've had a great time oh, so I'm far. I'm very happy, yeah. thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Dimitri. Oh, yes. So nice to meet you. Bye, baby. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. have only been up here for like an hour and a half in the sun and they're just like bone dry so I guess that's one of the advantages of being in a really hot climate right now. <laughs> So normally on a day like today, we would go out and do some sort of a water sports adventure thing. That way we're in the water, we're out having fun, we're staying cool, avoiding the heat. Today I've got a bunch of computer work that I've got to do, so we're stuck on the boat for today. And in fact, before I could start my computer work today, I had a couple of heat-related boat projects that I had to do. So I noticed that the engine compartment, specifically the area around the alternator when we're charging our batteries, gets super, super hot to the point where it may end up posing a problem. I'm gonna keep my eye on it, but the first issue that I had to deal with was the fact that when we first installed the alternator, the four aught cable that comes off of the alternator was kind of nestled against the foam insulation of the engine compartment. And that insulation was kind of like blanketing that wire or that cable so that it wasn't able to release the amount of heat that it normally gets to release if it's just surrounded by air. So I removed some of the insulation surrounding that 4 odd cable so that it can actually expel the appropriate amount of heat. The next thing I had to do is our Starlink router was starting to get seriously, seriously hot. Now previously we had installed two vents 
in the door for that locker, but that was just passive ventilation. There was nothing forcing air in or out, and it just wasn't doing the trick. So this morning, I installed a small little computer fan over one of those ventilation ports, and so far, that seems like that's definitely going to do the trick. The Starlink router is no longer getting too hot. I also had one not heat-related project I tackled this morning, and that is I had to clear out the intake hose for the water maker. I could see that there was a little bit of grass in the intake hose that wasn't quite getting into the C strainer. So I decided to disassemble that hose and clear out whatever was in there. Well, that seems a little odd. I've come into these situations somewhat often where there's a giant sea strainer that's designed to like strain stuff that comes from the ocean, but there's a one-way check valve on the upstream side of that strainer and so basically the check valve ends up getting clogged up with this C gunk and then the strainer is totally clean, doesn't strain anything, right? So you, like you need the strainer to be upstream of anything that's going to strain, right? Because the point of the strainer is it strains, yet it's easy to disassemble and clean. That check valve is not easy to disassemble and clean and it's gonna get clogged before the strainer. Seems kind of like not a good idea. I will say that Spectra recommends that I put a grate or a strainer over the seacock so that stuff doesn't get sucked in. But this stuff is so small, I feel like it would still get sucked in. Yeah, I feel like ultimately I might have to kind of figure out a solution for this, but I don't think we'll have that problem in most places. Okay, everything looks good. I think that solved the problem. So now that those projects are finished, it's time for me to respond to some emails and work on the episode. Luckily, I don't get heat headaches like Desiree does, so the heat doesn't affect me as much. But I will say sitting here in the boat for hours at a time on the computer is very difficult. <laughs> it kind of gets to me after a while, and I end up taking a lot of swim breaks. Kind of nuts how hot it is still, yeah. even though it's night. It's 10 o'clock. And even the water is hot, and it's, I don't have the hot water turned on at all. <laughs> so it's just the hoses and like the tanks and everything are still hot. Yeah, I was putting Isabella to bed, and I went into the V-berth and like just laid down next to her, and it almost felt like sitting in a car with like seat warmers because it was hot. The, the bed sheets was. were yeah. hot. <laughs> it's supposed to cool off. So that's the good news. Bad news is it's gonna take like a week. So we'll see. I guess we're just toughening up. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess it's just another lesson for figuring out the systems on this boat, you know? This is our home. This is our house basically for the next 10 years. So we just have to like slowly build all the systems in every kind of weird situation that we find ourselves in. Oh, I gotta say, one day I'm excited for air conditioning on this boat, man. Yes, I know. You've been telling me Did you me know that. that? You've been telling me Have you me heard about? Every day. <laughs> this thing called air conditioning. <laughs> All right, so today we are doing something about the heat, and that is I'm going to be installing these very expensive fans that we got. These are made by Coframo. They're the Sirocco 2, and my biggest problem with any 12 volt fans on a boat, they can be really loud. And so these are supposed to be a lot quieter. They can kind of articulate in any which way you want. And then they're really sturdy. So I'm hoping to be able to place these in positions where they can access a lot of air. This is something we had talked about doing back in Malta, but I had kind of argued that we should wait until we're really hot and we really know where we want them. And that is right now. Like we definitely know where we want these things. To wire these fans, I decided to just tie them into the power supply for the reading lights located throughout the boat, which made installing the fans a pretty simple job. Oh my god, that's I mean, nice. I can even feel it here and yeah. it's not even hardly pointed at me. I think a lot of it is because it's in front of the window too. So it's might, it's might... in front of the window and it just has a lot of air around yeah. it. What do you think, baby? Is that better?
Man, I've got more incentive than normal to finish this project. I'm like sweating buckets. The sooner I get this thing hooked up, the sooner I get to cool down. Oh, yes, that's good. We got fan number one. This thing is awesome. It can move all over the place. Then we got the second fan in here. This one will service like the whole nuz station. And then we got the third fan up here for the quarter berth. So, ready to get sailing again, do some cruising, do some exploring. She's like, that's a lot of wind. Ready to go see the rest of Greece? Yeah, where you wanna go, baby? Yeah. 